Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this video. I want to really keep it short and sweet. And basically we are introducing Apache Camel and how to quickly create services and iterate and have that developer experience and go in from the concept all the way to deploy on OpenShift. Now, this video, if you look at the descriptions, uh, you'll find the links to the resources for this article and perhaps the GitHub repository where the code of the tutorial uh, lives. Uh, but if we go through it, you'll see that there's some introduction to the tutorial with uh, some key steps for rapid uh, prototyping. Uh, but then eventually you have this uh, link to get uh, started. And this link will automatically provision the tutorial for you on the developer sandbox, which is free to access. All you need is just uh, an account, a Red Hat account. And if you do this for the first time, then you will probably end up in this um, screen where you have to accept the cookies and then probably register to create the Red Hat account. Uh, but then uh, after doing that, then this link should uh, uh, work well and uh, do the provisioning for you. Uh, now you have some here actions you have to take once uh, it is provisioned to open uh, that uh, documentation that uh, will give you the step-by-step -step guidance into all of this. Uh, so let's just uh, look at it. So if I, for example, click here, you'll see that it will initiate this provisioning process. And this for me will fail because I have already done it, uh, but just wanted to show you what it feels like. So I'm going to close the tab and then open my real uh, environment that I have already. And this is it. This is my VS Code uh, dev spaces uh, it's a uh, yeah it's like vs code basically and uh, okay let's do that let's unroll here as per the uh, clicks that are documented uh, let's find my tutorial which is there and then I click and then all I have to do is open here this will open the explorer with the tutorials and there's a bunch of tutorials but today we are just focusing on this one the camel and how to prototype and deploy on OpenShift so I'm going to click on that and this will introduce uh, the um, tutorial just like I did very quickly and present to you a sequence diagram that represents the demo that uh, you're about uh, to construct. And this is replicating, you know, a typical service that every organization has to do, uh, where you are integrating with a backend that only talks, uh, you know, old XML, uh, but we want to uh, translate that XML into JSON and so on. Right, so, uh, right. so this is uh, what uh, the tutorial wants you to do. So let's go ahead and uh, see how that is done. Now, I'm not going to do entirely the tutorial, that's uh, just uh, for you to do calmly, uh, but uh, these are just quick highlights that uh, will show to you the power of this environment and uh, visual prototyping and uh, um, the integration abilities of Apache Camel. Right, so we start, we have a CLI here from where we can run commands, but basically to create a new integration, you can uh, right click here and then say new Camel and uh, say, okay, new uh, Camel definition. You, we give it a name, we want to say user, that's uh, the name of the service we want to create. And this will, in the background, launch uh, that uh, command and uh, open in the graphical uh, user interface the process flow that uh, we are going to uh, work with. Now, this is uh, the usual timer to log sort of hello world process that Camel uh, initiates for you. And uh, we can easily run it from here. So we click there on that sort of uh, play button. And you see that below is already uh, starting Apache Camel loading this definition and uh, it will execute the process that you have on screen. And you see that is a sort of a loop uh, because the timer activity loops and fires an event every second and then executes this hello camel from root one, which basically if we inspect these activities, if we click on set body and we look at the uh, properties that are defined, we can exactly see how uh, that expression is defining the output of the execution. And then we have the log activity that basically is going to print out uh, on, the, uh, on the terminal. Uh, right, so what uh, we want to do from here, I want to show to you how we quickly can change things and how Camel picks that up and then reloads and then makes the changes and re-executes. So for example, if we click at the timer event, instead of firing an event every second, we want to change that and say that we only want uh, that to happen once, right? So we, saw, we find this uh, property called repeat count, we say one. And when we do that, we see that actually it has already picked up automatically without me uh, doing anything. 
reloaded the definition and now it has only fired one event and that's it it stops there right that's what we want uh, for easily see the changes that we do now i'm going to replace now this activity the set body one and we want to make that invocation to that legacy backend right so uh, the first first thing i'm going to do is to replace this because we want to clean uh, the the body or that uh, event with uh, an activity that is called uh, remove headers so this is to make sure that the call we are going to make is clean uh, towards that endpoint so we say star so this is uh, just eliminating any junk from uh, this uh, event from the timer activity okay so that's done and the second thing uh, then we can add uh, that uh, the call itself to the backend so that's uh, we say HTTPS right so this is a secure call now this is going to fail you see that it picks up uh, it throws an exception because we haven't configured this uh, call yet right uh, so if we click on it we see that we can configure this I have the value already there this is a public API that is out there for people like us experimenting and trying things and we can configure this uh, so that it responds in XML format so when we do that then we should expect here and effectively we can see on the output of this call we can see already this XML uh, response that we get uh, from the back end that is printed by the log activity. Okay, so this is great. So we are already doing uh, good progress. Now, what uh, we want to do if we close this is now that we have this process that already picks that XML response, um, we want to change the timer activity and but and we want to expose this process as an HTTP uh, service that people can call uh, from the outside. So let's do that. Let's replace this timer activity and say replace by the uh, camel platform HTTP activity uh, that uh, then we configure and you, we see that it fails because it's missing some configuration and what we can do here is just uh, put the user path to say that uh, we need to call this uh, with a user path all right so this has already picked up the changes and we are prompted to open this in a new tab because it's listening on port 8080 so I'm going to go ahead and open this and uh, well at first it says resource not found because obviously it's missing here the path that we configured which is user and when I click OK here we go right so now we are getting that XML response from that public API right so we are calling camel and then camel is calling the backend and is giving us back the XML um, uh, response right so this is great uh, again we are uh, rapidly evolving our integration uh, so now what we want to do is we don't want to respond with XML we want to respond uh, with uh, JSON so we are going to do some uh, data manipulation here and what we are going to do is transform this XML into JSON so the first thing we do is we find uh, here how to append an activity and in camel we we have data formats to do that so we are going to say okay and marshal uh, that uh, XML response into some sort of uh, Java structure uh, we have to find the right data format and in this case uh, we want to do this with this XML uh, Jackson uh, library uh, all right so that's the first step uh, and the second one is once we have unmarshaled the XML then we want to marshal in JSON so uh, we have the marshal which is the kind of uh, 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 the um, other activity and then we find here the json data format let's find it here uh, there you go okay that's it okay so now we have configured uh, the uh, XML to JSON transformation and it has picked up and reloaded uh, you know the new definition so in theory if we go here and refresh the page now uh, we should see okay now we do see uh, uh, JSON instead of XML which is what uh, we wanted right so there you go uh, that has been a quick data transformation a quick prototyping and we have the process that actually we wanted to complete which is the one documented here uh, right so uh, I'm going to stop this process and basically just to finish this uh, quick uh, uh, video uh, all I want to do is uh, to execute uh, uh, the export command that is going to deploy this on OpenShift, which is this one, right? So this is another step in the tutorial. So I can uh, copy these and then I can just simply paste it there and execute. Now, this is going to start analyzing the code, getting all the dependencies for me, packaging these, containerizing and deploying on OpenShift. It takes a couple of minutes or three minutes. So I'm going to stop it there because I've done it already and I'll show to you the result of that. So this is my pod. 
uh, that I have already deployed. You see that the name is user. And uh, this is exactly that process that we just have defined and the result of that execution. And it has a root. I can click and open just to try it out. And again, it says resource not found because it's missing here the path. And But if we say user, then we see that there you go. JSON comes in. We can click on the pretty print. And this is the outcome of that invocation. And there you go. With this, we complete a little bit what I wanted to show to you. The tutorial has a little bit more. Uh, so I really encourage everyone to go and provision the tutorial and play and have fun. That's all really I wanted. Uh, so uh, yeah, I hope I hope you have enjoyed this video and you have the motivation to uh, to play with it. Thank you very much. Bye.